Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on hiding and unhiding objects on user forms in Microsoft Excel. So I have here data in an Excel worksheet. This is fictitious data. And I have one variable that contains participants, another the educational level of those participants, and then another that has uh, award status. And that's either yes or no. So for any particular participant, we can enter, enter in their educational level and whether or not that participant won an award. So I have a user form that I've created that will facilitate adding this data to this table. So let's say we want to add for 1009, this participant has a bachelor's degree and they did win an award. So I'll check student has won an award, and I'll double click bachelor's degree and then it automatically adds that those two selections into uh, the worksheet. So in this instance, what if I wanted to have in this main form, I wanted to allow the user to enter in the educational level but not to affect uh, the award status, meaning to, to not be able to add an award. So this, this feature of uh, checking this box would not be available. How can I hide this object uh, from a user so they could still see the list box portion up here, but they could not see the check box? Now, in this particular instance, having one superfluous check box isn't terribly inconvenient. But if you had several items here, uh, say five or ten different items that uh, were added on that weren't necessary for a particular user, that may be a distraction and you would want a way to hide those objects for a particular user. So let's go into the editor for Visual Basic for Applications for VBA. That's Alt F11. And let's take a look at this form. So this is what it looks like in editing view. And you can see that we have a label, a list box, and a checkbox. So there's just three objects on the entire user form. So if you're not concerned with the effect of hiding one of the objects and leaving the user form at the same size, then probably one of the most straightforward ways is simply to make this object not visible. So we have to add, in this case, a toggle button. I'm just going to put that up top here. It's toggle button one. And, and you'd probably want to rename it uh, something to the effect of show additional objects or display additional features, but I'm just going to leave it named toggle button one. And then I'm going to check the name of this checkbox. I can see it's checkbox one. So by default, I'm going to make this not visible. So you see there's a property down here, visible, and it's set to true. So I'm going to set it to false. So now if we take a look at the form, you know, it, w it won't be there. Right? So if somebody adds, say, for 1010 for this participant, they have a uh, bachelor's degree, double click, it's automatically going to put a no in there because you can't check the awards item because it's not there. So the default for checkbox is now set to false. And I'm going to double click toggle button 1 and I want to use an if-then-else statement here to manage that checkbox. So I'll start with if toggle button 1 value equals true, meaning if it's clicked, then we'll set checkbox 1 visible equals true. So that'll, what this means is if toggle button button is pressed, right, that means it's true, then checkbox one becomes true, becomes visible. And then for else, which the only other case here would be uh, toggle button one being false, so we'll just put else. 
And I'm just going to copy this here, the checkbox one visible. And I'm going to paste it down here. And I'm just going to change it to false. And then make sure to end the if statement. I also think it's a good idea to put a tab in front of these items just to make it a little clearer how the subroutine is structured. So let's take a look at how this functions. If I go back here, I open up the user form, you can see that object is missing. I push the toggle button down, the object is visible. I hit it again, so I make it false, I make its value equal to false, and the checkbox disappears again. So that's one way you can handle it. Now, the one problem with this is if you're dealing with a lot of objects, it's not so noticeable here. But if you're dealing with a lot of objects, you're going to have a lot of empty space here on the user form. So you can hide the objects, but what are you going to do with this, all this additional space? So that brings me to another way of handling this. And we're going to use the same toggle button. And this time what we're going to do is I'm going to move the this item down just a little bit. So this is how it'll look when the item's visible. And I'm going to take a look at the height of this particular user form the way it is now. So I'll click onto the user form and I want to look for height, which is here. And you can see it's 242.25. All right, so I'll just change that to make it a little easier to remember. I'll just change that to 240. So the height is 240. And then I want to see what the height would be if I, got, I could not see that object. All right, so we could see uh, 186 works. So 240, you can see the object and 186 you cannot. So using the same code I'm just going to comment this out. So I'm just putting an apostrophe in front of the checkbox one visible equals true and false. You can see it turns to green. That just makes it a comment. So that code is not executed. On a new line I'm going to start with main form which is the name of this user form. Main form height equals 240. And I'm going to copy, I'll make an extra space here, I'm going to copy and paste that same line down here except I'm going to change this to 186. So you can see here that I'm just manipulating the height of the user form. I'm no longer manipulating the visibility of the checkbox. I'm just changing the height so when you press the toggle button the height changes to 240 so you can see the checkbox and when you click it again, make it false, it's going to return it to 186, the height to 186 and the checkbox would not be visible. So there's one more important thing we need to do before we test this out we need to change the default setting for checkbox one. Because right now by default it's not visible. So if I click on checkbox one, visible, I'm going to change that to true. So now the checkbox will always be visible, but sometimes it'll be hidden because the user form height will be manipulated. So I want to reset this to 1A6. So now it's back to 1A6. Uh, rather than do that, you could also just type in the number 1A6 uh, and it'll resize it. So going back to the worksheet view. So you can see by default, the additional object is not visible. So I can add different degree levels but it's always going to default to uh, no for the awards. I press the toggle button and it increases the height of the user form so I can see this object. So for 1013 
uh, is an award, bachelor's degree. I can put that in. You can see it's bachelor's degree and yes. So again, you can see for just one object, it doesn't make a huge difference. But if you're working with a lot of objects, if this were, were a large user form, you wouldn't want a lot of superfluous objects to be placed on the form that are visible that the user is not going to use. So imagine instead of just educational level and awards, you may have five or six columns here. But really, for the most part, maybe you're only manipulating uh, the educational level. If you're only adding data to educational level. You're not going to be adding data to all these other columns. So you put them in an area down here, and you, you change this to say something like display more options. And then you can toggle back and forth as needed. If you prefer, you could also manipulate the width. So if, if you wanted, uh, instead of it adding it down here, you know, or making it visible by changing the height, you could change the width, and you could have the additional objects over here to the right of where this list box is. I hope you found this video on hiding and unhiding objects in Microsoft Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.